Hi, I'm Stephanie and this is my home, the 16th century Chateau de la Lande. La Lande was owned for hundreds of years by a family of marquises who were at the heart of French royal life. One of them even had the honour of being sent by King Louis XV to greet Marie Antoinette on her arrival in France. But, far from being a stuffy museum, this chateau is a living home. I live here all the time and I'm regularly joined by my mother, my family, my friends and wonderful volunteers from all over the world who help me to lovingly restore this historic home. Welcome to La Lande, a chateau filled with life, love and laughter. Hello and welcome to the 300th Chateau Diaries vlog. I cannot believe we have made it this far. That's why I started with the old intro because I know a lot of you are missing it and I promise I will make a new one, but just as soon as the trees are in leaf in the courtyard. I now have a mammoth task ahead of me to try to condense 300 vlogs into half an hour. But in fact, the story of our time at La Lande starts long before even the first ever vlog because I bought La Lande in 2005 with my best friend Nick when we were only 29 years old. I moved in with Nick and my parents and we set about restoring the chateau as best we could with the funds that we had. We spent three years gutting La Lande and starting from scratch. We installed geothermal heating, underfloor heating throughout the ground floor. We added bathrooms to every single bedroom. We rewired the entire chateau, put plumbing throughout, re-roofed the chapel. And once we had done all that, we were left with quite an almighty mess that we needed to decorate. And so we turned the Grand Salon from this to this and we tackled the decoration of the bedrooms. I loved every moment of redoing the bedrooms and turning them into proper chateau bedrooms. But we ran out of money after three years with still a very, very long way to go. But it didn't matter because we were all here and we were happy and we'd started on our chateau adventure. And it's all because my friend Nick, pretty much against the advice of everyone in his life, decided to take a huge risk and buy with his friend a chateau in the middle of France. So world, here he is, the best friend that made everything possible, the elusive Nick. And I just wanted to say, Nicky, that without your brilliance in saying, let's go for it and buy a chateau and for it not to just be a dream, we would not be here. As you can see, Nick is the only person in my life who's not fully seen in the Chateau Diaries. He is always wearing some kind of mask and that is why he is known as the elusive Nick. Without him, none of this would have happened. We were really happy in those first few years and it was so nice to see everything coming together. But then life took a turn for the worse and I entered what I call the Miss Havisham years. My darling father, who'd been such a huge inspiration and support for me in the renovation of La Lande, sadly died in 2009. Nick had to move back to England because of work and my mother eventually found a lovely new husband, Percy, but he lived in South Africa, so she started spending most of her time away from the chateau. And I was left quite literally holding the fort. It was at that time that I decided to start welcoming volunteers into the chateau, just as I would have people around me. And their support gave me the strength to keep going, carry on bit by bit with the renovations, doing what I could. But that period of my life at the chateau came to an end when I was asked to appear in a TV series in England called Escape to the Chateau DIY, along with many other chateau owners in France. And we were followed restoring our chateaus. And that changed everything because suddenly people all over the world were watching La Lande and were interested in its progress. So I thought, well, I'll start a vlog and then I can update people on what's happening. And in fact, the first ever vlog that I made at La Lande was my preparations for a party to welcome all of the other chateau owners who were also in Escape to the Chateau DIY. And welcome to our first ever entry in La Lande's video diary. Yes, the first ever vlog was in portrait mode. In fact, the first 29 vlogs were because I was making them for IGTV at first and it was only when I switched to YouTube that I moved to landscape. The theme of the first party that I was organizing was come dressed as someone who owned your chateau in the past. So you could pick any period of history and I'd chosen Louis XIV's cousin, La Grande Mademoiselle. So I was making a 17th century dress. And this next clip shows both the glamour and the reality of chateau life. Because as I'm making a beautiful costume, Jerry comes in fixing a broken toilet seat. 
Okay, I finished boning the front of this. Now I'm about to start on the sides, and then we'll see oh, if oh. I. Oh, we have a problem. That ah. is there. But the dress was made, the toilet seat was repaired, and the party was a huge success. And it was the start of me making friends with other chateau owners across France and building this community of chateau owners who all help each other. And even more importantly than that, it was the very first time that I ever met Michael Petherick. But the thing that makes me laugh the most about the first vlog is that already from the very beginning, I was using the camera to protect myself from my mother. You must be like Princess Mary. Go away! Shall you bring us a hammer, please? If I had a hammer, I'd have her in the morning. <laughs> oh, suddenly you saw me and you started smiling! Yeah, you're caught, you're caught. <laughs> And this is a theme that's carried on throughout the Chateau Diaries. Possibly my favourite example of this is in the vlog Mummy on the Warpath. I hear that Mummy's on the Warpath. Yeah. <laughs> She's in the laundry room. Do you think I dare go into the laundry room? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Hello! I can't believe That's why I'm looking at you from behind a camera. I heard that there was problems today. I don't try to know what they're doing here. No, that, that is confusing. But if the fact that there are nails in the laundry it's room is the that... worst of our problems, then we're, we're all right. I'll move this to where it should be. I get overburdened by the stuff to yes, be needing doing. You're standing in the rooms that need the most work. Go and sit in the kitchen no, and have a cup of tea. I've tidied up the kitchen already, please. I think you should come out, come out, out of the laundry room. Let's go through and have a cup of tea, Mummy. Yes, I think I need one because I'm about to blow my brain out. <laughs> But your brain? Oh well, as long as you're only blowing your own brain out and not anybody else's. I start shooting myself and then I go around shooting everybody else. <laughs> yeah, you stick to that way round. Group hug! What? Group hug everybody! Oh, go, go, go. Group hug! Hug! Oh, no. no. We need oh. 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 trying to strangle me. <laughs> It's been quite a while since my mother was at the chateau because she's been treated for eye problems in South Africa, but it looks as though she'll be able to be here very, very soon. But in the meantime, as we await her arrival for real, here are just a few of my favorite mummy moments. I need fresh air. I have no idea what you're talking about and no idea why you're dressed it's like so that. Dirty, that. Your safety footwear. Everything can go in the machine, you see? Mm -hmm. I can't believe you're my mother. No, I, I have my doubts personally too. Mm. Yes. That's the problem with the lawnmower. Well, mummy, that's we not my department. To start it because somebody left the ignition on. Who was it? Find them and punish them, maman! What is this? It's, no, because otherwise, this to remind me of Percy. You put that against my luggage. <laughs> This was just the first in a series of lawnmower based disasters that kept striking because our poor John Deere was so old and it kept breaking down and it was the bane of my mother's life. But little did she know that her mowing years were about to change forever, just as everyone's life across the entire planet was about to change because this was just before the global pandemic hit and we were entering a pretty bleak time. Jerry and I had gone on holiday together to Vietnam and Cambodia on a boat trip along the Mekong. This is because Jerry had just been diagnosed with prostate cancer and he wanted to get away and think about something else before his treatment started. Whilst on that boat, one by one, each of my bed and breakfast bookings for the months ahead was cancelled as news of this new coronavirus was starting to spread around the world. It was going to be the very first year since buying the Chateau in 2005 that we were going to break even and I saw that disappearing before my very eyes. The future was absolutely not looking bright, but I wanted to stay upbeat and positive, and I made a video whilst I was on that boat, just to say, I don't want to dwell on all of the problems ahead of us, and I won't be talking about them again in future vlogs, but I thought it was important to address them. We all have challenges in our life, and many people face challenges far worse than this, but the way we face them is what makes us who we are. And my philosophy is that we should deal with things without letting them bog us down. And in this, my greatest inspiration at the moment is, as always, Scott Mann, who is facing what he calls a wee dot of cancer. So as the sun sets on the upper Mekong, 
what I want to say to all of us is let's face the music and dance. And that's exactly what we did. I raced back to Laland. I managed to arrive on the day that the first lockdown started here and I started the quarantine diaries. I started vlogging like crazy because there was nothing else that I could do with my time. And very quickly, my channel exploded. I had tens of thousands of new subscribers. And on top of that, just before the first lockdown, I had launched the Chateau Diaries Patreon account where I would give signed welcome cards and extra weekly videos of more Chateau life behind the scenes, interviews with the people in the chateau and renovation updates to my patrons. And I could not have foreseen just how well that would have gone. It grew and grew during that first lockdown. In fact, now we have over three and a half thousand patrons. It's absolutely incredible. And it's transformed life for all of us at La Lande. And even more importantly, it's transforming the fabric of the building. But one of the very first things that I did with the patron money coming in was to get a new lawnmower for mummy. It's arrived. This is the day we've been waiting for. I'm running down as fast as I can. I think I can hear it though. We're all a bit worried. <laughs> oh. terrifying me to see you go towards the dry moat at that speed when you don't know the machine yet. No. I know that you'll get used to it and you'll be great at speed but until you know it I please understand. nowhere near the edges because that way there's a drop into the old lake that way there's a drop into the dry moat it's terrifying watching you. I'll be careful. Could you practice by just mowing the center of the lawn? Yes. Yes and don't go anywhere near the edges I do not care about the dandelions. Yes darling. Careful I'm going. Yeah, we shouldn't be worried, should we? Because imagine we're the dry moat. Don't hit us. I just told her to do the middle of the lawn. She's going back exactly to where she was when I wasn't happy. Completely ignored me. Look at that. Completely ignored me. I said only do the middle. And what's she doing? She's only doing the, the edges. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. There goes a box edge. <laughs> Which part of only mow the middle of the lawn did you not understand? What's that? No, Ian's I wanted Bluetooth to do phone. the dangerous part in front of you and that now you can leave me. The conversation wasn't, I'll do the dangerous part whilst you're here. That wasn't our agreement. No, the agreement that I thought we'd agreed was that you were only going to practice in the middle of the lawn. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, now you can leave me. Go, go, go. Thank you very much for what, your support. What selection of music oh, she's would you telling like? Us to go. What? The music of my thoughts. There was such a joyful moment. And after years and years of watching my mother struggle transforming the barren wasteland that was our walled garden when we bought into a productive vegetable garden by this point. I wanted to do everything that I could with the Patreon money to continue to help her with her passion that was the garden and I was finally able to employ a gardener. And what I love the most about the next clip is that it shows the most important thing about buying a chateau or in fact doing anything in life following any of your passions it's to keep hope alive all the time. This clip was recorded before we had a gardener, before we had any hope of having a gardener. Having the arches made for this side of the garden, and mummy thinks that we only need them where there are those vegetable beds, but I think they need to carry on over the Lalande wasteland area, there, where there's a bonfire, because it'll be the same as this side. But I am terrified that more beds will mean more work for me. We have to think of the future, mummy, even if we haven't got the manpower now. We have to believe. At this rate, 
look at this work. I might not have a future. <laughs> It just goes to show that you must never stop believing because I was able to employ the long dreamt of gardener and mummy and Selma set about preparing for his arrival. They're getting ready to burn to prepare the area for the gardener to clear. And then when all of this has been burnt, eight more beds will be created in here to mirror the eight beds over there. It's really funny for me now to watch these clips when Dan was just the gardener. We'd never met him and now he's become such a big part of our lives. Though his first appearance in the Chateau Diaries was very low key. It was just, do you want a wild strawberry, Dan? Oh yeah. Bye-bye, <laughs> yeah. thank you See so you much. Later. See you next time. That's all right. <laughs> you see what he's done today and it was such hard work. Isn't it incredible, eh? It's One wonderful. Day a week. My mother and I were ecstatic at the thought of a gardener for just one day a week. So I can scarcely believe our luck that now we have Kirsty as a head gardener who looks after all of the maintenance of the gardens and the walled garden. We have a new gardener starting with her this week as a trial. I really hope that goes well. And Dan is dealing with huge earth moving works around the chateau to create entirely new gardens. And let's face it, He's become quite a legend in his own right. Dan, I'm basically just filming red boxer shorts right now. You're lucky that I'm wearing any. <laughs> Dan is the man with a drone in his hand. He can brick or weed or cook it in a pan. With his wicked sense of humor, he can start his own rumors with a digger and a cool green van. I love that so much. And that incredible song is by Tannis Simmons. It's called Lovely La Lounge. She wrote it especially for us and has given me her permission to use it. And you'll hear a lot more of it in this vlog. I actually blame my mother for turning Dan into an absolute legend with his own YouTube channel, Escape to Rural France, because as you'll see from the next clip, it was her who made him think about the viewers as much as the garden. I think if you took your shirt off, it would be more popular still. Mummy! <laughs> Mummy, that's outrageous! Well, it's not me <laughs> oh, reflecting well, other people. Know. That's weird because it was you who said it, Mummy. <laughs> no, but the thing is, I, ha I saw something about that on the vlog, and so I thought, well, I should pass it on. <laughs> It's not for my benefit because I've got my Percy. It's not for my benefit. I don't know, she's been hinting for a while. Oh yeah, I'm not surprised. I can only apologise, Dan. <laughs> I absolutely apologise for my mother's behaviour because I, for one, would never, ever use a man's body just for more clicks from my viewers. Ever. occasion they just accidentally get in front of the lens of my camera it's absolutely not on purpose but I have to say that as I was finding all of these clips from the past 300 vlogs it was incredible to me to see the transformation and the walled garden is just one tiny example of that mummy finally got the vegetable garden that she had always dreamed of and of course the garden's always a work in progression but to see it now and remember how it used to be is absolutely incredible but the Chateau diaries are absolutely not just about the changes to the building they're about the people who live here and in fact that is why I started making them in the first place after my father's death I was so disappointed that I hadn't taken videos when he was alive that I decided not to make that mistake again and to record as much as possible of the people who live with me and whom I love and when I look back at the old vlogs they're the moments that I love the most I mean who could forget the moment that Jerry became Scott Mann. Why do you have trousers on underneath your shorts? Because Superman wears his underpants <laughs> above his trousers. Okay, good, good. So this and is. And I a... think this is the time when somebody has got to make a stand. There's not many Super Marvel heroes left. And God knows we need a Superman in this house. You know, from now on, I want to be known as Scott Man. All right, <laughs> we have Scott Man. <laughs> Scott. What can we not achieve with Scott Man? And this is Michael Potts's first appearance in the vlog. He's the third owner along with me and Nick. The three of us are best friends. And for some reason in his first appearance, he was juggling his socks. 
He's then gone on to spend most of his time in the vlogs swimming in the frankly disgustingly muddy moat. Elusive Nick and Marie et ton fils Antoine, Isabelle, Percy and Gerald too. Michael Potts and Ruth and Josie Cat and many more have chosen the always open door and she la long. And who can forget Selma's first appearance in the middle of the first incredibly strict French lockdown when suddenly a camper van appeared. You will not believe what just happened. I was peacefully sitting in my bedroom window, mummy was in the kitchen, Nick was in the guardian's house, when suddenly a mobile home drove into the main courtyard and I saw Nick going out to investigate. Then a bit of time passed and then Nick arrived at the foot of my window and went, staff, your volunteers arrived. And it turns out it's somebody who asked to volunteer at La Lande that I spoke to by email two or three months ago. I presume no one was coming because of the lockdown. The only volunteers I've heard from recently are people saying obviously they can't make it. Well, now he's here. There's the mobile home. So Selma the Dutchman is now in quarantine in his mobile home for the next two weeks and mummy is dropping food off in the basket of his bicycle. Selma, Selma danced in like a star But it's Stephanie you wondering who you are With Tatiana he's planning new adventures truly grand But the animals will miss your kind heart Selma has now moved on with the love of his life, Tatiana, and they are looking to buy a chateau together in France. I wish them both the best of luck with that, and I'm hoping to see them in the south of France next month. My friend Oliver's first appearance in the vlogs is pretty typical of him, because he just immediately took credit for the entire chateau. I am the reason you have the chateau, because I introduced Stephanie to basically all of her friends, including Nick, who owns the chateau with Stephanie. And Michael. And also Michael who owns the chateau with Nick and Stephanie. Um, and basically everyone you know. Yeah. And do you show appreciation? In his later appearances, he's mainly spent his time creating the most beautiful artwork that graces the walls of the chateau. But he has been known to help me in the kitchen from time to time. They're actually really nice. These are so good. They yeah. are the best things in the garden at the moment. These red gooseberries. A Lalande fruit crumble. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's my favourite show everyone the, the severe workplace injury. Do you think this looks like an idyllic garden? It's actually fraught with danger. <laughs> Worth it for the gooseberries well, though, isn't it? You, I don't think that you did the appropriate health and safety training before we did that. <laughs> you look at that and think that's just a nice innocent gooseberry bush, but it wasn't going to give up very easily, was it? It didn't give up easy, but look yeah. how many we got. I feel we bad. won in the end. It's not bad. No, we won. It's absolutely fine. And then as soon as I taste it, <laughs> Is it a bit tough? <laughs> and next we have Marie's first ever appearance in the Chateau Diaries, followed by possibly my favourite moment in all of the vlogs, my mother's reaction when Marie accidentally crashed the Jaguar. The Vikings have arrived. <laughs> the Viking number one, Marie. Hello. <laughs> Something bad's happened and we need to take you to see it. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Uh oh There was a crash. Oh no, not the with Jaguar. the Jaguar. Yes. When did that happen? Do you know, a couple of days no. ago. That's going to be so expensive. How did it happen then? I can't remember. You did it. Mm. Was there another car? Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, you can just stay here, Marie. What can I say? <laughs> I'll tell you what's going to happen. I baked your favourite cake today. <laughs> Oh, that, that old chestnut. Yes. Percy yes. will be able to fix that yeah. in no time. No, yes. he won't be. Jesus couldn't fix that. <laughs> but the good news is, we got the number plates for the new car. Yes, I'm sure they Yay! 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 All's well yes. that ends well. We're just going to have to switch off the camera while we all beat up Mary. <laughs> okay? The next time you see Mary, she'll have a few bandages. There, go! Stop! Stop! It's on record! Stunning. Thank you. Honestly, this is like a movie. I feel as though I'm in the set of some Disney movie. Marie, Marie, my fleur de lis, as natural as one can be. 
She's Instagram for hours, conferring with the flowers and evolved to a success story. The next moment was a very exciting one for me because I finally made the decision that I could devote myself to the vlogs full time and employ somebody to run the bed and breakfast. So I asked Natty, who'd been a volunteer in the past, to come back to take on that role. And this is the moment when I went to pick her up at the train station. I'm going to collect Natty at the station and look, the light is just magical. It feels as though all of nature is celebrating Natty's arrival. Two big suitcases. I'm great. This is my smiling face. Natalie, Natalie, a true beauty and timeless in a red medieval gown. She never seems to rest, taking care of all the guests. And when the cattle mail comes around. These we're going to the woods to clean all the woods, you know. <laughs> you got me there for a minute. <laughs> and little did Natty know just how much her life would be changed by taking this job because it's here at Alain that she has met my cousin Amory and they have fallen madly in love. A fact which I suspect has disappointed a lot of women around the world because Amory has been pretty popular ever since his first appearance in the Chateau Diaries. And Come on, Amory, you've got to make drinks for the ladies. I think that they would like possibly gin and tonics or some bubbly. Or some bubbly? Yeah. Do you have any bubbly left? A uh, load. We are going through the bubbly like there's no tomorrow. You might need to put some in the fridge, but we've got absolutely loads. We're not going to run out this weekend. Okie dokie. Amory, Amory, so look at all our series. He came to do the panelling install. Now he's digging. Just lose his shirt for the long he is a grand windfall. And of course, it's not only Amory and Natty's love lives that have been transformed. I also met Philip when he arrived here as a volunteer. And this is his first ever moment. He arrived as we were filming Caddo at the Chateau. And just after this is the clip that I find one of the funniest in all of the vlogs. Yes. It's Philip chasing the rooster. We haven't seen a face yet. Hang on. Would <laughs> <laughs> you like to come and sit down? Well, I think you're far enough oh, away to show the world your face. Oh, hello. <laughs> you look like a musketeer. <laughs> That's good. That was definitely a compliment. Well, I am from Maastricht, so Darignan is like that. Really? Yeah. See, I could it? tell. Hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> Selma's uh, happy, another Dutchman in the house. Yeah, with long hair. Right. Ah, yeah. Dutchman. Feeling, <laughs> feeling with passions deep for porcelain and woodland creatures sweet. With a striking sense of style and talents versatile, his presence makes the Lord complete. It's impossible for me to show all of the people who've touched my life and who've transformed the chateau in just this one short vlog. I definitely want to make a special mention to Michael Petherick who persuaded me to put my vlog onto YouTube in the first place and has been such a great friend ever since. And we've had many amazing moments together in the vlogs. And I did want to add one clip of Kat because I know a lot of you will want to see her trying on Sian Vendetta's incredible medieval inspired dresses one more time. I'm so happy! <laughs> Look at this! It's so beautiful! There's so much material! And it's so warm! It's warmer than my jeans and dungarees and I don't know. That's why I'm thinking, why are we ever wearing jeans why or dungarees when we could be wearing this? This exists. Just, you know, me doing laundry, wearing this. <laughs> Taking the bins out, wearing this makes every single thing better. <laughs> 
and a special thank you to Davy, who's an amazing landscape architect. And since he first visited Lalande, he has set about designing the most incredible plans encompassing all of the gardens, including the reinstatement of Lalande's Lost Lake. It is so exciting what he is doing, and it's amazing how much we've already achieved. When we look back and see what the courtyard used to be like when Nick and I first bought the chateau in 2005, and compare it to the way that it looks now, even though there's still a lot of exciting plans ahead of us, we have achieved so much. But hopefully the next 300 vlogs will be even more exciting than the last 300. As we tackle the facades of the chateau with the new plans that we have from our architect, as we continue to put Davy's garden plans into action, and as we continue restoring the interior of the chateau, the next project that we're working on is the most exciting one so far. It's the installation of 18th century French panelling that I was able to buy when it was removed from an hotel particulier on the Ile Saint-Louis in Paris and which is going to be put into the Grand Salon here at Lalande by my cousin Amory who is the most incredible carpenter. And that's a transformation that we'll be following over the next few weeks. I think that I'm possibly the chatelaine of this chateau at the most exciting time in its whole 500 year history. A time when it's being watched by people all over the world who are helping me to restore it and make it more beautiful than it's ever been. So a huge thank you to my patrons. Each and every one of you is making a vast difference to life at Lalande and to the future of this chateau. And thank you to all of you who watch the vlogs. So cheers to the 300th Chateau Diary and here's hoping that we make it to at least a thousand. Stephanie, Stephanie with a joie de vivre She's the bubbles in the Bollinger Champagne Her vlogs have been a lifeline With love and laughter so fine Breathing life into the long dog